Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Chelsea transfer video. First things first, guys, make sure you smash the likes, subscribe if you're new around here, and as always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And after the bombshell of Pedro Neto yesterday, there are some more stories doing the rounds in regards to transfers. Raheem Sterling has emerged as a target for Juventus. Carney Chukwameka is attracting interest from Barcelona, whilst the Victor Ossiman deal is seemingly still not dead. That one could go right up to the deadline. Plus, Trevor Chalaber is also attracting interest from Aston Villa as they search for possible replacements with Diego Carlos, who looks like he's set to join Fulham. So plenty to dive into as always. But let's kick things off with Raheem Sterling. If yesterday wasn't uh, a great day, uh, you know, if, if, if the signing of Pedro Neto, sorry, wasn't good enough cause for celebration. There were then reports emanating from Italy that Raheem Sterling, Juventus are interested in Raheem Sterling, who's been added to their shortlist of a new winger. Obviously, they're looking at Fiorentina's Nico Gonzalez. They're also looking at Porto's Francisco Conce Sao. The only issue potentially is that Juventus are looking for a loan deal. So I, I don't know how how open Chelsea would be to letting Sterling leave on loan. I think it's pretty clear that if the opportunity presented itself, that Chelsea would love to get his wages off the books. You know, he's 29 years old now. He's on over 300k a week. And if we're being brutally honest, he isn't really going to improve much as a footballer or if if, if at all. Um, obviously, a loan deal is not ideal. We know Italian sides haven't got the most money. And Chelsea would likely have to contribute a large chunk of Sterling's 300 grand a week plus wages uh, if he were to complete a loan move to Juventus. This is really the first potential links we've had with a move away for Sterling. You know, there's not been many suitors for him. Yes, apparently he, tur he turned down an approach from Saudi Arabia last, last summer. But other than that, he's not really been linked with a move anywhere. And it would be kind of a textbook Juventus signing. Um, do, you, do you know what I mean? Uh, sort of a loan deal for someone who's perhaps a bit over the hill, uh, expensive player, you know, all, all that sort of jazz. But yeah, I think it's clear that Sterling's days at Chelsea are numbered. Yes, he's done okay in pre-season, shown a few glimpses here and there, but Chelsea need much, much more on that left-hand side. And in Mikhailo Madrid, who obviously needs to step up big time as well, Chelsea are going to probably lean more towards backing Mudrick than they are to backing Sterling, who's getting older and is on big, big money. The, the arrival of Pedro Neto is going to push Sterling potentially further down the pecking order as well. And yeah, I'm under no illusions. An exit this summer is highly unlikely. Uh, but it would be interesting to see what Chelsea would do were a legitimate offer to be put on the table and how open really is Sterling to leaving the football club? I mean, why would you be when you've got three years left on your contract? You're happy in London and you're earning over 300 grand a week. And you know full well that no one else is going to pay you anywhere near that amount of money. But Raheem Sterling has been linked with a potential move to Juventus. But if I'm being brutally honest, I, 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 be, I, I fully expect him to be here uh, come, come the end of the window, which... The greatest of respects is, is is unfortunate for us, but I do believe this will be his last season at Chelsea. He heads into the final two years of his contract next summer, and there's no way he's going to be offered a new deal when he's going to be 30 going on 31. Moving on to another story that surprisingly uh, has uh, come out this morning, and that is that Barcelona, uh, Carney Chukwameka is currently Barcelona's plan A, if they end up signing a central midfielder, they made contacts with Chelsea and his agent before the US tour. It's not progressing at the moment, but the path is left open. Now, this is an interesting one because Chukwameka obviously has got immense ability. He, he arrived, what, a couple of years ago for, for 20 million quid from Aston Villa. He's been plagued by injuries. I think he's, he's only made about 27 appearances for the club in all competitions over two years. You know, that that's not great. When he has played, though, he has shown shown glimpses of the potential that he possesses. Uh, started last season really well, uh, had a good preseason on the Maurizio Pochettino, but then virtually missed the whole campaign due to a knee injury he picked up in the second game of the season. Um, you know, he's come back, got himself fit towards the end of last season. Has worked hard over the summer, 
And he started he started against Wrexham, played the full 90, then he started against Celtic. But then and perhaps what could be deemed as an ominous sign, he didn't feature in any of the remaining three games of the tour. And there's been nothing to suggest that he's injured or anything like that. There's been no news about, about anything that might potentially be wrong with Chukomeka. I think it's purely a decision that Moresca has taken. And I... You know, despite Chukamaker's talent and despite how much of a fan I am of his, I think that's genuinely an ominous sign for him. And it would be interesting to see if he if, if he's involved at all this weekend against Inter Milan. If he gets no minutes or sort of 10, 15 minutes against Inter, then I think it's an indication that he's not really part of the plans despite his talent. Um, I mean, a move to Barcelona would, would be a strange one. Is he, is he that good to play for them? I'm, I'm not really sure. I think he could potentially be that, but he's certainly perhaps isn't, in my view, right now. I still believe in the player, but we've got to be realistic about this, guys. We know he's got a £40 million release clause in his contract. That was revealed earlier this summer. AC Milan had been interested, and Fabrizio Romano reporting that Chelsea had turned down multiple loan offers from unnamed clubs uh, throughout the summer. And, you know, they've maintained their stances that he's not for sale unless they receive an exceptional offer. I don't think Barcelona would be offering an exceptional offer. But Trickle finds himself down the pecking order at Chelsea because particularly the arrival of Neto would suggest that Cole Palmer is going to play in a bit of a deeper role as a number eight. Maybe Nkunku is going to play more as a number eight as well next season, given that's where he's been deployed throughout a number of the pre-season games. You know, Jewsby Hall's arrived and you've got Enzo, Lavia, Caicedo all battling for places in the midfield it would appear that Trukomeka is not going to get the minutes he needs. Despite Chelsea playing in a conference league, he probably isn't going to get the minutes that he needs to develop into the player that, you know, we think he, he can become and, and, his, and his potential suggests that, that he can reach. So I, I have to be honest, I'm concerned about Trukomeka. I really am. I'm not saying that I'd sell him, but I genuinely think if an offer came in, he would maybe consider it because I can't see how or where he gets the minutes he's going to need at Chelsea to develop. But on the flip side, Chelsea have got the issue where if he's not, if he stays and he's not playing much, he's not really increasing his his transfer value at all. So we're in a little bit of a catch twenty two of that one. But Carney Chukwemeka is attracting interest from Barcelona, but they will only move if Hansi Flick requests a new midfielder, and that remains uncertain at this point in time. But it's an interesting one. The futures of both Sterling and Chukwemeka, uh, I think, are, are interesting points of conversation. Chukwemeka more so than perhaps Sterling. But it's going to be interesting to see if an offer comes in for Carney, whether he changes his mind as, as we get towards the end of the window. Maybe it becomes more apparent he's not really that much of a part of Maresca's plans. And he might want to go and play elsewhere um, to, to develop his game and get to the minutes that, that he needs. Um, talking of players that might be playing elsewhere next season, there's also been an update on Trevor Chalaber. Matt Law stating that another team are interested in him, and that is Aston Villa. He's being considered by Villa as a possible replacement for Diego Carlos, who is obviously attracting interest from Fulham and could well be on the move. Now, we obviously we know what the Chalaber situation is. He's been exiled from the first team squad. He's training with the development side. Um, it's clear that he hasn't got a future at the football club. Uh, you know, you guys all know what my thoughts are. And I think people, most Chelsea fans share the same views that the club have treated him in a, in a, in a really poor way. Um, and, you know, he's got four years left on his contract still. They offered him a new long-term deal less than two years ago. And now the stance has, has very much changed for what I deem as purely financial reasons, nothing to do with his footballing ability or anything along those lines. Now, Chalaber, you know, reportedly is not in a rush to take a decision on his future. He's believed to want to uh, play champions, oh, sorry, not Champions League football, European football, if he leaves Chelsea. We know that the Blues value him at around 25 million quid, which is a joke. It's an absolute bargain for any potential suitors. And I tell you what, a move to Aston Villa would actually be great for Chalaber. It's a club on the up under, under Unai Emery. There's Champions League football for him to play as well. Um, and it's a massive football club. And I think that would be a brilliant move for Trev and one where I think he would do really, really well. But again, you know, Chalibur can is, is under contract and, and he's under no obligation to move whatsoever. He's got four years left on that deal and he's got every right to take his time to decide what he wants to do and if he wants to leave. I, I, I'm not sure if I see Chalibur 
you know, staying at Chelsea. It's not that he doesn't back himself to win his place back. I think it's quite clear what the club's stance is and that if he does stay, they would they would seemingly banish him from the first team. And he really doesn't want to waste a year of his career not playing football because he's been frozen out. So I expect some sort of developments to come on this Chalaba future in the coming weeks as the window draws to a conclusion. But yeah, as I said, I think Aston Villa would be a brilliant, brilliant move for him. Um, I mean, ultimately, I'd love Chelsea to have a change of heart, but I really cannot see that happening in any way, shape or form uh, at this point in time, despite our defensive issues. Um, and I think it's a decision that's been taken well above Enzo Moresco. I don't think he's had any say in it whatsoever. Um, and I personally feel that he probably quite liked Chalaba, but it, it, it's not down to him. So that is kind of where we are at with all the latest Chelsea transfer news. Obviously, there's a few loan deals that are going through here and there. We know Pedro Neto is going to undergo his medical this weekend ahead of completing his move to the club. Uh, Slanina, the young goalkeeper, has gone on loan to Barnsley in League One. Just get some experience of English football. Um, not really sure what the, plan, what the plan is for him, to be perfectly honest, in the long term. And there's reports of a potential loan to the championship for Diego Moreira as well, which I think would be a good solution for him also, um, as we try and offload players and find temporary homes for, 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 for players as well. Um, there's a lot of activity to be expected at Chelsea over the coming weeks before the window closes in terms of both incomings and outgoings. But yeah, guys, that's just, that's just my roundup on and thoughts on the latest Chelsea transfer rumours. Make sure you smash the likes, make sure you subscribe if you're new around here, and please do leave your thoughts in the comments below if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said. And I'll catch you guys again in another one soon. Up the Chelsea and peace out.